Hey, what's up, everybody? Dorn Aldana here coming at you with another episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And uh, we're coming at you from mortgagemarketingcoach.com. And I have a very special guest today, the one, the only <laughs> Robert Spiegel. And he is on the front lines of capitalism with the feet in the street, making things happen just like you guys. And so he's going to be sharing his story on how he increased his production by 76% in just three months. And here's the kicker, without cold calling, chasing realtors, kicking, kissing ass or any of that stuff. Kissing ass, yes. Kiss, or rather, kicking ass, yes. Kissing ass, <laughs> no. Hell no. We don't mess with that. That's doing it the hard way. So uh, you guys are going to be able to have an inside look from a loan officer who's in the trenches just like you guys and is you know, certainly well acquainted with the trials and tribulations of being on the front lines and the trouble and struggle of trying to grow a mortgage business and all the trials that come with, you know, getting loans, operations, finding a home for the loan, all that stuff, juggling everything, being the chief cook and bottle washer, and then finding a way to really shift from just being the same old, same old loan officer struggling on his own knowing that he's capable of more but not knowing how to unlocking a higher power of focus productivity and poise in what he does day to day such that he was able to almost double his business in three months if we take what he's done now compared to what he was doing last year chances are it's even more than double but right now i'm citing the most conservative statistic i have which is when we finished up the uh, 90 day debrief after we started working together, he had increased, boost his production by 76%, which is definitely fan freaking tastic if you ask me. So, uh, Robert, thanks for hanging with us today, brother. Well, thanks for having me. It's fun to get to come and talk about myself. <laughs> no doubt. It uh, tends to be the perennial. Uh, most fascinating topic for any human being themselves. And so today, yep. chances are, will be no exception. And uh, the cool thing is, is that this is a very relevant story, even though it's uh, certainly near and dear to your heart and mine. It's also something that a lot of people can relate to because a lot of the trials you went through, a lot of the people listening and watching uh, are either going through or have gone through. So this yep. is going to be uber relevant for a very large percentage of our audience. And so why don't we just kick things off by getting to know you a little bit. Why don't you share a little bit about um, how long you've been in the business, where you're located, and uh, what inspired you to get into the business? Why don't we start there? Hmm. Sure. Um, so I my, my office is in Houston, Texas. Uh, I have been in the industry for uh, 23 years. I have been solely focused on mortgage for 17 years. Um, we are all residential lending. Um, I got into the business. Hey, if you ever read the book, Who Moved My Cheese? Yeah, um, I absolutely. was in commercial real estate um, and I was working for a developer and the economy kind of changed. And our biggest client, we built shopping centers and our biggest client um, said they weren't gonna do any more work in Texas. And I was making a decent living um, especially considering I was like 22 at the time. Um, and then my income just dried up in like three, four months and suddenly couldn't pay my bills. Um, I had had a friend um, who ended up being my mentor who encouraged me to get into the mortgage business and come work for his company. Um, I actually just had coffee with that guy two days ago. I haven't seen him in about 10 years. Wow. Um but encouraged me and it was right at the beginning of a refinance boom and um i had a client my first client was my grandfather and he had a bunch of condos and i went to him and i was like hey we need to refinance these condos and uh i got my feet wet on his condos and nice. it was i closed my first couple of them and i was like this is fun um had no <laughs> clue what i was doing i was probably really terrible but he didn't know any better anyway. He was just happy somebody was paying attention to him. Right. Um, <laughs> and that was that. Uh, I was that that kind of set me into the, the mortgage business. That's pretty cool. And since it was plural condos versus condo, that yeah. was kind of a cool way to wet your uh, palate into the loan business. 
getting a cluster of deals as opposed to just uh, a one, you know, one hop, one pop wonder. So great way to launch into the business, no doubt. Agreed. And I have always been known in the market as a condo expert. And it literally started with those because, you know, condos have never been an easy project, product in the state to lend on. There's just a lot of intricacies um, with homeowners associations and whatnot. And yeah. that um, I had to learn so much. This guy who mentored me was like, take home these guidelines. And that was when the guidelines for products were like yellow page phone books. I mean, they were right. huge. Um <laughs> And I went home and read and read and read and read, and I just became suddenly that kind of like kind of cornered me as an expert in condominiums. Now we do all products, but I uh, I still know a lot about condos. That's cool. Well, having a yeah. niche definitely is a great way to position yourself in the marketplace, differentiate yourself. I'm a big fan of getting rich in your niche, no doubt. Yep. So yep. Uh, thank you, Grandpa, for the launch into the yep. condo niche. Nothing wrong with making a few G's from grandpa, making a few nope. grand from grandpa, right? <laughs> no, it was, it was a great way to get started and, and it allowed me to make mistakes with, um, you know, not necessarily with like a client on the line that had their stuff on the moving truck. Right, um, yeah. And, and that, that made it a lot easier. Very, very cool. And what's interesting about your story, you mentioned the book, Who Moved My Cheese? That book is very near and dear to my heart uh, for a variety of reasons. The primary reason is because when I was trying to shake off the wife uh, 17 years ago from her boyfriend who had been with her for about a year, I came up with this uh, scheming idea because I knew she wasn't entirely happy, but she was happy enough to kind of stay with the cheese. And even the cheese was getting a little oldy and a little moldy and she wasn't altogether satisfied. Uh, she wasn't being willing to go off into the unknown of the maze. This is all part of the metaphor of the Who Moved My Cheese book. If you guys have read it, you know that to be true. If you haven't read it, you're probably rather intrigued or confused right now as I unpack this. But bottom line was I gave her the book and what's crazy about it is that she ended up reading another copy. The same weekend I gave her the book, her boyfriend at the time had a birthday and he got the book for his birthday. And so she read his copy instead of mine. How awesome is that? Isn't that crazy? That is really weird, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Needless to say, after she read the book, she got that she needs to shake off the moldy cheese and get with some fresh Dorn Aldana cheese. So it worked out just fine. <laughs> yeah, well, I think we and everybody in their life typically is guilty of kind of chasing after either cheese that doesn't exist yeah. or they keep looking for that that cheese that they think is so wonderful and it's um you know it's moldy and fuzzy and gross and 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 you know i think i've certainly been guilty of that a number of times in my life yeah and absolutely any human being who's going to get real with you who's been on planet earth for any period of time i think would uh, concur that that's a very common human experience and i think that's why the book is uh, so powerful because it's an allegory metaphor for how, how us as human beings resist change and are fearful of change so that's a perfect dovetail into kind of before we met you had been in the game for quite some time uh, you've had lots of time to try and go out there and try and figure it out on your own. Yep. You're pounding the pavement. You're beating the bushes for business. Your way was working, but not as much as you'd like, not as fast as you'd like. And yep. I like to say you were doing it the hard way and your cheese was getting a little moldy. Uh, it wasn't as satisfying as it used to be. And uh, you, you weren't willing to settle for that cheese like you used to. So tell us about uh, some of the most painful challenges you were suffering with day to day before we met. And then uh, we'll talk about how things changed after we uh, started working together. But what, why don't we start with the, uh, the dark valley of where you were prior to us meeting? Okay. Um, so I think I had, I've always been on a trajectory of where my business was kind of growing each year, somewhere between, you know, 15, 18%. So a respectable growth. Um, you know, over those years, kind of what had happened was, um, I slowly started growing a team maybe uh, about five years ago um, and started shifting into that team atmosphere. Um, and then we started bringing in more business from a bunch of jerks. Um, and I really, I don't know, it kind of put me into a rut, I would say, because I just, I've always kind of worked to live. I have not lived to work. 
Mm. Um, and this made it really bad. I mean, it was suddenly like, if this is what growth looks like, I don't want this. Um, mm. Because kissing someone's ass that I wouldn't sit at a dinner table with um, was not where I wanted to be in life. And I found that we were working with a ton of jerks. Um, so, you know, kind of left me in a little bit of a tailspin. Um, not quite sure what the, the next growth path was. And so I produced about the same numbers for three years, 2015, 16, and 17 were all like ex my production was within a couple million dollars of the year prior. Right. Um, and so I found myself in a rut um, called boredom. Mm. Um, and not, you know, I, look, I was doing, you know, somewhere between 24, 28 million a year. It, it wasn't these weren't bad numbers and I wasn't starving, um, but I was bored and didn't really want to come into work. Um, I'd put on some weight, drinking a little more than I needed to. Um, and later discovered, you know, it was just all sheer boredom. Um, so I kind of went on this quest uh, starting probably towards the end of last year of like, okay, what's next? And maybe it's not in the mortgage business. Um, which, you know, seemed to me like such a waste because I had a great book of business. I had a lot of loyal repeat clients. I have a good database of people. Um, but sort of some marketing things that I had tried sent me in a direction that weren't working. Um, and so, but suddenly that left me in this position of maybe I will leave this industry and go find something else to do. Um, I really just got very clear. I didn't want to go start something new and have to relearn and do the whole, like, I don't know what I'm doing thing. Cause our production numbers were good. Um, what really excels is our process is great. Um, my loan process works well. We consistently had happy customers. We just needed more of them. Right. Um, and so because of that knowledge of the time I've been in the business, I really didn't want to go start over doing something else. Um, it seemed like a waste. So that's kind of how um, I think like a lot of people that are probably listening to this, I started watching you on, uh, I think, some of the Facebook stuff and started reading stuff. And I think at some point you posted something that was like schedule a call with me. And I kind of just said, oh, okay, whatever, I'll try it. We'll see. You know, not not huge expectations of anything major other than, you know, I might take away something. And uh, that was the start. And I think that was in February. Yeah. Was like five months months right. ago, yeah. Months. Yeah. So that was that was kind of how we began the next journey. Yeah. And the rest is history. So we're going to talk about fast forward to July 2019 in a moment. But yep. let me just uh, recap a few things you mentioned before we move on uh, that are worthy, I think, of highlighting. Um, one of them is you were doing relatively good numbers. I mean, most yeah. people in this industry don't even break six figures. So you were right. certainly doing better than that. You're doing 200 yeah. plus. You were you know, making a healthy income. Uh, mm -hmm. However, you mentioned the word boredom. So there's this sense of stagnation. There's a sense of banging your head against the wall, doing the same mundane things day in and day out, no growth, no progress, banging your head against the proverbial glass ceiling and doing that enough. It does in many cases, if you don't find a way to induce some kind of growth or progress or an injection of new energy, it can absolutely start to pull you into this low frequency of boredom. And anyone yeah. who's been in that rut of stagnation knows that's not a pretty place to be. And as I've often said, Good is the mortal enemy of great. So yeah. most people on the outside looking in would see you and say, man, you're doing great. But in the inside, looking out, you're thinking, man, I'm doing good. But, and that's where you differentiate from a lot of people because a lot of people, they'd be happy to sit on their laurels and be happy with 200K a year, whatever it was. Yeah. But you obviously had something burning in your heart uh, that told you I'm capable of more that told you, yeah. you know, sure, I'm doing good, but there's this glorious summit that I can climb. That's the next mountain to climb called great. And I'm not content to just stay on this lower mountain called good. It's old hat. 
you know, been there, done that, got the t-shirt. <laughs> I'm ready for something more. I'm ready for a, a bigger challenge and a bigger adventure and richer rewards. And so that's obviously a journey everyone has to take that journey of, am I okay? Just sitting on my laurels and, and, and slipping into stagnation. Most people aren't that for the healthy human being, they want to grow where real progress is where real passion and real happiness is, is in progress. So you were feeling the disgruntled dissatisfaction of stagnation because let's be real, things that stagnate tend to rot and you weren't yeah. content to just rot. So then we get on the phone, you say, okay, screw it, let's do it. Let's try out this breakthrough call. We hop on the phone, we lift up the hunt in your business, we look at what's going on. And uh, you know, obviously the, the rest is history. We've been now working together uh, since February. So I guess that makes it about five months ish. Um, however, if we look at just the elite, the first uh, three months, you had some significant gains. You certainly are having gains still, even after those three months have come and gone, but 76% growth in production in the first three months. So tell us about what was like, if we could kind of be that, um, fly on the wall and listen to your own personal conversation, kind of listen to the self-talk in your own head. What was the real most potently powerful motivating factor that made you decide to say, screw it, let's do it and invest in yourself uh, with our proven plan? I mean, there was a lot of different things, but if we had to just choose one, what would it be? Um, I think I was being a little, I was really oblivious to some very obvious problems in my business. Um, kind of ignore, not really oblivious, ignoring them willfully. Mm. Um, and the conversation that you and I had about, I don't know about, I think there was a conversation we had about systems and organization and how things are working. And when you lifted the hood on my business, there was this whole piece of like the inefficiency that I am in my business. Mm. Mm hmm. And suddenly, you know, I, I didn't intend to sign up with you on that call. I was sure. really just facts, you know, fact finding, look, researching. Um, but you made some points and, you know, the things that came up were like, holy crap. Yeah, I totally get that. Uh, I saw where like, I'm inefficient. We are operating on some software and some systems that just don't work. And like, maybe I'm actually the reason why we're working with jerks. Um, and so kind of that, there was that turning point that was like, you know, I don't really have much to lose. Um, and I went for it. And what would you say was the biggest thing at stake for you and not, you know, if you were really to be real with yourself, the biggest, most painful thing at stake, if you didn't step up for higher ground and go for great and just settled for good. Um, it was probably another you know, year or five years of just uh, general unhappiness and boredom and frustration. Mm. Uh, and, you know, there's something to be said for showing up at a business you like working at. <laughs> and, no, no. and I, yeah, and I've always liked this industry. There's definitely been times in this industry where I've hated it. Um, but generally speaking, I like this business and I'm good at it. Um, so, you know, I, you know, you don't, I don't want to be, I don't want to be frustrated at my business. I don't want to be frustrated with my clients or with my referral sources, or I don't want to be frustrated in life. I want to have a good time and enjoy myself and make a living um, that allows me some freedom to go out and play. Um, and kind of that, that kind of tune up conversation or that look under the hood conversation was like, wow, I, I kind of grew a business. We, you know, over the last let's say ten years, we grew we grew quite a bit, and um, it grew into something I didn't like. So, if I'm hearing you right, yeah, what was really at stake for you was your happiness, your fulfillment, Absolutely. and if I could put it in simplest terms, you being able to choose the life you want versus just settling for a second best life. Yeah. And being yeah. some, you know, I can be a, a mortgage guy for the rest of my life that did what I was doing, um, but not really having the life I wanted. Yeah. 
And I think so often people prolong a problem for a lot longer than they need to because they soften the problem and they say, I'm doing better than most, you know, and you certainly could have slipped into that. Perhaps you did, you know, I'm doing better. Yeah. Than we call that in the sales world or marketing world, softening the problem where yeah. us as human beings, we tend to soften the problem. It's like the fat guy who's a hundred pounds overweight and he says, I got big bones, you know, to soften the problem as opposed to just saying, I'm freaking fat. I need to get help. I need to get a trainer. I need to get some healthy food. I need to get in the gym. I need to work out. I'm freaking fat. Enough is enough. No more. I've had it. I'm done. Yeah. So you got to the place where like, man, I'm bored and I'm leaving a shit ton of money on the table and I'm settling for way less than I'm capable of. Screw that. Yeah. No more enough. I've had it. I'm done with that. So everyone has to, and I truly believe for someone to create a breakthrough in their life, they have to come to what I call positive perturbance, where they just get so freaking pissed off with the pain of the problem that they're willing to do something about it now, not someday. Yeah. Positive perturbance. Right? I, I think that, you know, kind of like that uh, it's painful right now, and I'm probably going to have to go through a little bit of pain to get where I want to be, and I was just ready for it, like yeah. ready for for that change, that sense of you know, even just having something to be excited about, there was no excitement um, in just being a you know kind of a mortgage order taker, um, right. and and so yeah, especially when being the mortgage order taker is paying the same amount every year, and meanwhile everything's becoming more and more expensive, and it's becoming more and more mundane and redundant and repetitive, and yeah. you're feeling stuck, right? Feeling stuck is no place to live. So, yeah. you know, you've been in the game a while, 16 plus years, you're a veteran in the game. You're, you're certainly no newbie to all the different bright, shiny objects that it seems like every Tom, Dick and Harry is hawking as the next, you know, best silver bullet to success in the mortgage space. Yeah. Tell me about some of the things you looked at or tried or considered uh, prior to us working together that, um, had you come into the call, maybe a little cynical, maybe a sure. little resigned, maybe a little jaded. Tell me about that. Yeah. Um, so there was another coaching program that will remain nameless. <laughs> sure. But I'm sure people um, who've been in the game for a while could probably uh, read between the lines. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, you know, if you've, if you've been on any, you know, webinar, you know which one I'm talking about. But, um, <laughs> You know, one of the things for me was I, you know, there's this great call at, you know, Monday mornings to 9 a.m. call all your referral sources and what have you. And it's funny because I have some really great referral sources and they complain to me nonstop about those loan officers. That, if, you know, how those calls were super insincere and annoying and how, you know, there was one guy, there's a, a real estate office in, in Houston that is probably like the number five or six real estate company in, in our market. And, you know, those realtors have told me in the past that the loan officers that are in that program, they literally can hear every extension, every phone on every desk ring, nine o'clock, 9.02, 9.04, 9.06 a.m., you know, with their quote unquote morning updates or the check-in calls or the, you know, whatever you want to, to call them. And, you know, a lot of those loan officers that are in that program actually have a pretty great business, but there was this insincerity about the whole thing where like suddenly now I have to go sell mortgages to people like that wasn't what I had originally envisioned my business my my I wanted you know my vision has always been that I want to work with people I really like and that I have fun and that way when I go to work it feels like I get to work with my friends all day long and right. have a good time novel concept <laughs> right <laughs> that program was like, I don't know, it's, you know, when the realtors are joking with me about, oh, yeah, it's so-and-so calling, must be 904 on Monday. <laughs> um, right. I'm like, you know, that's that's just not, so, and I had actually gone, you know, past a couple of the bases with that group and uh, just was like, that's not right. Like, people who I think are cool thinks that's annoying. Right. Um, there was another program that um, had some similar ideas. Um but, you know, something in my gut just said this, that it just wasn't right. Um, so we had definitely tried some different coaching programs. My company had also had some, you know, motivational speakers and different uh, topics and mortgage specialists and people come in with different ideas and ways. And, 
you know, we always kind of took one or two things away from those. And a lot of them, you know, we implemented a lot of those things, which is kind of what got us to where we were. Um, but we never really had any breakthrough results. You know, my breakthrough results were 15%, 18% increases year over year. Right. Um, and that, you know, I don't know if that was really those systems that I was implementing or just the growth of my book of business sure. year over year, you know, probably yeah. a little of each. Yeah. And so, you, know, you, you certainly have a pleasing personality and you uh, <laughs> you have the, the work ethic. So you combine that with a growing book of business where you're adding, you know, 30, 50, 70, 100 transactions a year. You should expect some growth from that because they're all going to yeah. be refinancing and repurchasing down the line. So we would yeah. expect as a baseline, even if you're doing it the hard way, 10 to 20 percent increase, even if you're just doing a little bit with that database. Yeah. Uh, but again, you weren't willing to sit, sit on your laurels with that and you weren't willing to do the intuitively hard way and kind of douchebaggy way, if you ask me, of reaching out to realtors, which is calling them every single Monday at nine o'clock yeah. on the pavement and kissing ass and schmoozing when it comes off so inauthentic and there's no real meaningful conversation that adds value to them. It's just checking in and seeing how they're doing and blah, blah, blah. Same thing every Monday. And yeah. yet this is what these coaching programs are teaching. And frankly, it works better than waiting for the phone to ring. Let's be real. If you throw enough yogurt to the fan, eventually something's going to stick. I mean, come on now. You know, yeah. we talk about, you know, and we see these loan officers that have been in this, these programs for three, five, 10 years, and they're doing, you know, big numbers. But what they don't really tell you is all the time, energy, and effort they're wasting doing it the hard way. All we see is the end yeah. result because they're doing more proactive effort than most. And they should have more success than the person who's just passively waiting for the phone to ring, even if they are doing it the hard way. But I mean, if you want to dig a hole, you have the choice between using a shovel or using an excavator. I don't know about you, but, you know, I much prefer the excavator over the shovel. Yeah. And there's no brownie points at the bank for doing it the hard way. So, you know, why, why do it the Cro-Magnon caveman style from the dark ages if you don't have to, right? So... You checked out some options intuitively. It just didn't feel right. Yep. Uh, then you pulled the trigger after realizing, man, oh, man, I'm settling for good. I'm ready to step up to great. You pulled the trigger on our program and the rest is history. 76% growth within three months. And you just keep climbing upwards and cranking to higher levels of, of production and delegation and automation and systematization and all that good stuff. So tell me about the lingering skepticism that you had before you pulled that trigger, because there was still a little bit, chances are, if we're really honest, still a little bit of like, Hmm, this isn't exact. I was just looking for some information. Tell me about the, uh, the thought you had before you pulled the trigger. That was maybe a little bit of like, man, should I really be doing this? Or I don't know. This is kind of like uh, a big leap into the deep end here. Tell me about some of those, you know, honest, uh, thoughts you had before deciding to take the plunge? You know, when I took the plunge, I think there we got off the phone and there was kind of a natural high. And then within a couple of hours, sort of the, oh, shit. <laughs> and I even say, I guess, yeah, we're not on TV. Um, so, yeah, there was like this, oh, shit moment of, oh, right. God. And, you know, part of what kept sticking with me from our call was that I had been really stuck in utilizing systems in my business that we'd either outgrown or just didn't work anymore. Um, or we, you know, and as we say a lot, doing it the hard way. Um, yeah. I was definitely doing a lot of things the hard way. And there's a saying that you always use that I repeat everywhere. In fact, we just came out of a production meeting and I told my staff, you know, lowest hanging fruit. We chase after lowest hanging fruit. So in a refi market, that's people with the highest interest rates that have the most to benefit. Those are lowest hanging fruit. Absolutely. In a purchase market, it's you know buyers that are outgrowing their home from our existing referral sources, and also people in our database who you know bought a home five years ago and didn't have kids, and now we know they have kids, and you know they're outgrowing that house. Um, we are really systematized or on our way to being much more systematized um, such that I can always chase after lowest hanging fruit um, and make more money. Um, it also, I think when we got off the phone, the other, it just, 
I'll give the example. My CRM, my um, database, um, I think you told me I'd probably outgrown it three or four years ago, which was arguably the year that we had signed up for that database. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and and you said it and it was like a punch in the gut and then I had to like chill out and go god we knew them like literally 90 days into that system we knew we were it was not the right choice and we right. made a mistake but now you're entrenched and then moving a database is such a freaking nightmare for us at least yeah. I don't know if everybody else has this problem but it was such yeah. a nightmare that I'm like I never wanted to do it again um you forced me to go do it again <laughs> Um, and I think there was a lot of like, hey, I've been avoiding all this stuff. It's time to just shut up and let's get it cleaned up. Now, you said well, your other question was, what is the um, kind of the, the reservation or the lingering resentment or something like that after the phone call? I don't remember what the exact yeah, the hesitation was. or the, the, the fear or, you know, that maybe a little buyer's remorse or even just a sense of like, holy crap, what am I getting myself into? Those kind of honest there, years. there was a sense of i'm probably going to be called on the carpet for some stuff that i have not been managing well and i know how to manage better mm. um and there was um and definitely some of that came up um but the bigger piece was really looking at the opposite side of that which is i'm actually really ready yeah i didn't want to be stagnant and sucky and kind of keep on doing what I've been doing. We were either going to try something big or go home and I might try something big and then go home if it doesn't work, but like, who cares? I mean, I, I had to yeah. do something. Otherwise I was just going to be continuing on the same path. And that didn't sound interesting. Right. right. If all you do is punt, you're never not going to knock it over the fence. Right. Agreed. Agreed. If you want to knock it over the fence, you got to start swinging for the fences yeah. and uh, you just weren't, willing to settle for another day of punting, having well, a punt and, life, you know? And, and no one was really holding my feet to the fire either. It was kind of, you know, look, when you spend the money on a coaching program, it's like, for me, it was like, I'm going to go get my money's work. <laughs> um, hell or freaking high water, right? No kidding. And, and I have this to-do list, which is now out of my arm's reach. But like, you know, we started with to-do to -do lists in March and started attacking, you know, things that were really the most important on the to-do list. And, things immediately started making a difference. Um, okay. Things started shifting, things got easier. We definitely had our share of some things that <laughs> I'm very clear were not working well in my business and then didn't work well at all. Um, and, you know, had to clean up some stuff. Um, but it was all in an effort to kind of get to the path that we are now on. Yeah, so let's talk about that path. Here we are now six, about five months later, Let's fast forward to just three months later, and then we can come to present day. So three months later, 76% increase in production. Tell us yeah. about some of the objective and subjective game-changing shifts that have happened over the last um, three to six months, just in terms of you know measurable results, as well as other meaningful shifts that have happened since you uh, got in the game and have been in this balls to the wall, all in hustle, leveling up your game in this program? Um, okay, so measurable shifts were, we cleaned out a lot of referral, a lot of realtors that I was working with that I just didn't like. I was literally working with them for the money, which is, right. that is the kiss of death. <laughs> the minute I am beholden, to, I'm basically just your bitch. And right. <laughs> I, we definitely we we divorced some relationships. Yeah. Realtor um, enema, right? Flush them out. It was time. <laughs> it was a little painful when we did it, but I mean, the next day after each one of them, it was like, oh thank God, I don't have to talk to this person ever again. No more fangs um, in your neck, right? Or or a knife in my back. I mean, you know, it's easy in this industry to be kind of everybody's little, you know, kicking boy. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, at a certain point, it's like, I'm too good at what I do. My team is too good at what we do. We're not going to be anybody's bitch. Right. Um, so we cleaned out. That was number one. Number two, um, we had to get a new database, a new CRM in place um, that could manage the growth, the future growth, as well as our current needs. Um, we did that. That was it's so painful. 
I don't want to do that. <laughs> and it's, a I like cleaning, it's a bit like cleaning out a closet, isn't it? It gets worse before it gets better. Awful. It's so painful, but we literally went on the system that always intimidated me. But the truth of it is we will never outgrow it. I'll be on this system for the rest of my career until I yeah. retire. Yeah. Um, we, through the lowest hanging fruit program, you know, one of the things I really needed to do and nobody had kind of held my feet to the fire, which is to reconnect with all of my past clients. Um, and that involves, you know, making calls to them just to say, hi, there's no sales pitch, which for me felt very authentic because mm. I actually am interested in finding out what you're up to in life. And I yeah. really don't want to sell you a mortgage. Um, right. So that made a huge difference just in overall well-being. Like um, I call every client now on their birthday. Beautiful. Uh, it's the highlight of my day. And because yeah. all these people, when they pick up the phone, they're not used to these calls from me. They immediately think I'm selling them something. Right. And when I go, hey, I was calling to wish you a happy birthday. Like everybody's tone changed. Like, oh my God, that's so nice. <laughs> and chances um, are their friends didn't even call them on their birthday. No. Right. Or Sometimes they got even email. their family members don't call them on their birthday. Or they got an email or a text message or something, you know, like this was, I gave you a call. I've gotten texts, you know, I've had to leave people voicemails and I've gotten phone calls back or text messages back. We're like, that was awesome of you to call me. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and they can tell, back. they can tell you took time out of your day because it wasn't oh. a, it wasn't a, Hey, happy birthday. It was a hi, Suzanne. Happy birthday. It was with their name. It was like, there's no way you could have automated that. Right. It was not a voicemail drop. It was not a text message. It's a phone call and, and with the objective of talking to them. Now, if yeah. I get a voicemail, fine, great. I'll leave a message, but I really want to, I want to talk to you. Yeah. Um, so then we, um, we really started chasing after lowest hanging fruit. Um, we were, we had a fairly decent number of referrals. I mean, part of your opening the hood for us was, you know, I, I close a fair amount of loans each month, um, but we set some lofty goals and that was going to require more leads, more things going on in the business. And it required me to be a lot more focused on generating business, not necessarily on the nuts and bolts of loan approvals. Right. Um, and that was a big change a big change because I, you know, most loan officers and, and I've had a number that I've worked with, we're all the same. We're kind of micromanagers. Yeah. Um, and I have a team and it was um, difficult for me to tell the team, like, you just have to make a decision um, or figure it out. That's one of my favorite lines, just figure it out. Yeah, that's huge. Um, and now we have, I'm not in the nuts, nuts and bolts. Look, I don't, everybody, and roll their eyes because it's like, yeah, okay, if there's some insurmountable problem on a deal or something. Yes, they still come to me and say, hey, we've tried this three different ways. It's not working. You got any ideas? Mm -hmm. um, and I may have ideas, but that still doesn't suck me back into now I'm implementing those ideas. Right. Yeah. What you're really speaking to is the power of empowering your team versus delegating to your team. You know, you can delegate yeah. to your team, but if you're micromanaging every step, you're only going to be able to take your leadership and your team's production right. to a certain level. But when you empower your team to be independent and autonomous without you and competent yes. and confident in your absence, now you got a real business, right? Now yes. you get a real business that it can actually set you free as opposed to have a, having a glorified job that just enslaves you to the office ball and chain every day. And as you like to say, being the Google, right? Where yep. everyone treats you as Google to get all their queries and questions answered. That's not the game. So a huge yep. level up for you and your leadership. And I'm sure it had nothing to do with the fact that you're investing proactively, strategically, boldly, intelligently in yourself such that, you know, it's like, I can't afford to continue to be the bottleneck here. Right? I'm sure it had yep. nothing to do with any of those insights, revelations, or, you know, uh, the fact that you just decided I'm not willing to settle for the way I used to be. If I want to, if I want right. things to change, I have to change but uh, obviously I'm being facetious. So obviously there was a big piece of you making that uh, bold strategic move that had you increase the boldness and the power of your leadership and influencing your team. So that's, yeah. that's awesome. Well, and, and, and I think that's the hardest, that's one of the hardest pieces for me. That's one of the hardest pieces for the loan officer. You know, we do want to do a good job for the client. Um, and, and so some of that means, you know, like if I have to step in and fix something, I've got to fix it. And, 
the truth is, is that I have a team of people who are experienced, um, one of which actually has more experience than I, has been in the business longer than I have. The other two are very close um, in time that I've been in the business. And, and so, you know, the feedback I've gotten more than once in the, in the recent past is, you know, you just don't micromanage us at all. You let us just manage our files. Um, and that's a big testament to kind of where we're going. Um, mm -hmm. I need you to handle it. And I assume you're going to do a good job and I don't need to get involved. And that's for the most part, what is happening. And now that has allowed me to go and take on all of my marketing activities and my rainmaking activities to keep driving business in the door. Um, and, and that's cool. And, you know, and also I think the other piece of it from a, a kind of a manageable or the, what's actually, you know, measurable is, you know, the team that we have and how we operate as a team um, and who's responsible for what, um, that's made a huge difference just in, you know, we, we had, what I think we have 24 units in the pipeline right now. And, you know, it's nice. operating pretty smoothly. We were not a 24 unit a month shop. We were a 12 unit a month shop, 10 unit a month, even eight some months. So, um, and, and yet the wheels are not falling off. You know, it's not like we're the truck running down the road with the wheels coming off. We're right. We're pretty much under control. Um, and that's great. That's awesome. And again, a huge testament to you stepping into becoming a better version of yourself, leveling up your leadership, uh, leveling up your marketing, leveling up your ability to be proactive, plan your work, work your plan. A lot of the systems we've been putting in place, the automation we've been putting in place, uh, the blood, sweat, and tears of putting in uh, a new CRM. Lord knows that ain't an easy feat. But again, you know, you're willing to do the stuff that's hard so that life can be a lot easier. Because if you only do the stuff that's easy, life is going to be mighty hard. And yeah. so you're willing to uh, swallow that, uh, you know, that bitter pill, so to speak, in the short term. So you can have the sweet glory of victory in the long term. So yeah. anything else? What would you say is the most meaningful um benefit actually before we get into that let's fast forward to now okay here we yep. are we're kind of like july um it's at the time of this recording it's uh july 12th i think 2019 we talked i think mid february i think it was similar time in february so it's been a good five months um tell me about how things are looking now maybe do a contrast like what you did last year and what you're on trajectory to do this year. Give us an idea of like, what kind of a difference has this really made in some yeah. of the meaningful numbers in your business? Well, cleaning up my business has made a huge difference. And that's a lot of these systems and a lot of the getting more efficient. Um, last year we closed, give or take about 27 and a half million. Um, we eclipsed that number. We did that number by like June 18th of this year. That's awesome. So we're pretty much set to, we'll probably have a hundred percent increase this year. Um, That's year to awesome. date, we're at, um, we're pretty close to 35 million, um, which is, a. Uh, that's, I mean, if you told me in February, I was going to get third, I would hit 35 by July. Uh, I would have told you you were full of crap. <laughs> um, and and I would behold, think, here you are. And I think Doran, when I signed up, I think I was I was kind of thinking, you know, if I could do twenty five percent increase, yeah, that would be sure. that would be yeah. amazing. That's double what your average was for the last three years, right? Amazing. I would have been really happy there. And then the numbers started coming in, and things started happening, and we were working better. And it's not like I'm working from you know I don't work from eight a.m. to eight p.m. I work a normal forty hour work week for the most part. Um, and to be at the numbers that we're at right now, it's, it's crazy. And I don't have a unit. I was going to tell you a unit count. I, it's too hard for me to add up. But yeah, there's been a decent number. Pretty fair to say you're at around 100% doubling your business at this point. It was 76% three months out. Now here we yeah. are five months out. And we're tracking around 100%. Yeah. So the trajectory is only going up. And that's what we like to yeah. see. You yeah, know, we hope to have, I want a $60 million year this year. So we're. Screw that, brother. Let's go for 70, 80. Okay. Yeah, let's 
you already got momentum. You got Big Mo has come to town. You got that working in your favor. Mine You're as already, well. 60 is already in the bag, brother. We got to stretch you to higher ground and go for 70, 80. That's, that, that's what's uh, available when we keep the pedal to the metal and keep that momentum going. You know, what's funny is in our initial call when you had said, you know, why don't you do, I don't remember what, our, I think our original number might have been 40 million. Um, when you said, let's do 40 million, I was like, oh, okay, fine, whatever. You know, really with like a huge whatever in the back of my head. <laughs> you say 70, 80 million. I'm like, oh, okay, we'd probably do that. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, and it's just a change. The other thing I wanted to say that that is um, a lot of the company you keep is kind of influential as to where you are going or what your trajectory will look like. So if everyone around you, and, and I have been very guilty of this, is a naysayer and the mortgage, you know, the industry sucks and real estate's terrible and all realtors are assholes. And, you know, if that's the conversations that you are involved in, in a day-to-day -day basis, that is really going to be your reality. Right. And yeah. Can... Agreed. Yeah. So a big piece for me was constantly being around conversations that were either bigger than me, uh, better than me, um, people who were really up to like crazy big goals and anyone who was kind of locked in the whole, well, this realtor's a jerk or the, this market's terrible or it's just so hard to be a loan officer. Um, I, I, I had to let some of those people go. I've had, you know, we just can't play that game. Yeah. Um, Cause yeah. it's fine. No matter what market, what economy we're in, there's still a business. There's still a, an, an industry here to make a living at. And what you're really speaking to, Robert, because I couldn't agree with you more, is that defiant resolve that has had far reaching impact on so many areas of your life, from your health routine to the kind of realtors you allow to be in your stable and have the privilege of working with you, uh, to the kind of friends you keep, the kind of uh, people that you allow into your energy orbit. And it really speaks to you raising your standards, you know, and that's. Yeah something Tony Robbins talks a lot about that. If you want to change your life, you got to change and raise your standards. You got to shift yep. it from being a should to a must and really understanding that nothing's going to change until you defiantly resolve in your heart and your mind, you will not settle for average any longer. You will not settle for mediocrity any longer because as the saying goes, if you lay down with dogs, you're going to come up with fleas. If you want to be yep. a winner, you can't afford to hang with losers. I mean, you're, they're going right. to pull you down. Uh, you're going to, you know, pull them up by the centrifugal force of your energy and your defiant commitment to move forward. Maybe they'll keep up with you, but if they can't keep up with you, then they got to drop out of your life. Otherwise they're going to pull you down. Right. It's the, uh, that, uh, analogy of, or rather the metaphor of kind of like trying to stop the train with your bare foot. Right. You know, you can, you know, try and get on the highway with a, you know, 800 ton brick on your back, but it, it just doesn't, that's what that negativity is like. So that's yeah, that, that's a huge step of cleaning out and this journey and, and kind of getting where you need to be. And that's the way it is like when you get into this momentum of thinking like a champion, walking like a champion, rolling with champions, you become like an Amtrak train with no brakes and no gears. I mean, right. watch out now. You better get out of my way because I'm going through you, around you. It doesn't matter what. I'm moving forward, period. End yep. of story. Right? Yep. Yep. So what's been the most, we're, with uh, a little bit of a wrap-up question, if I can call it that, because we're short on time, what would you say, you know, if we were just hanging uh, together for dinner or, you know, at a cocktail party or whatnot, and we're longtime friends, and I'm like, okay, brother, uh, there's been a massive change in your life. I see it in you. I see the twinkle in your eyes. I see the pep in your step. I, I see so many you know, beautiful changes in what you are being, who you're being, and the kind of life you're leading. And I, if I was to ask you, Robert, what's the most meaningful benefit? Not necessarily the most tangible, but the most meaningful benefit in you deciding to step up and invest in yourself with this program, what would you say the answer is? For me, it's been that every day brings a new adventure. Mm. I don't really know what's going to happen on a day-to-day -day basis. And and we have these days where I'm, you know, maybe driving home at the end of the day and and it's just like, whoa, like <laughs> today was today was really cool. Yesterday my 
team. I wasn't even in the office most of the day and they locked a bunch of deals. And uh, I just was thinking about it this morning. I'm like, holy crap, that is not something that was possible a year ago. And, and how cool. I mean, like I didn't do anything. I just like was seeing the, we get lock notices on the phone and I, and I kept looking at my email. I'm like, damn, they locked a lot. I mean, so that, um, <laughs> that excitement and that kind of like, I don't know what's going to happen next week. Um, but I look forward to it. And that's a big, that's a big shift. That's beautiful, man. I'm so happy for you. What a what a wonderful shift from boredom, stagnation, being yep. in the same old rut to excitement, adventure, wonder, fun, uh, progress, forward momentum, movement, growth. I mean, there's just it's like night and day. It's like you were in a dark room with the light turned off and someone just flipped on the switch. And that switch was you just decide, deciding, like I said before, enough is enough, no more. I freaking had it. I'm not settling for good another day. It's time to go for great. Yeah. So huge inspiration, man. I know uh, there's many people listening, watching right now that can see themselves in your story. And I'm sure that uh, you've triggered for several people listening and watching a similar response where they just decide, you know what? I'm with you, Robert. Not one more day. Not one more day I'm going to want to settle like this. Yeah. If things are going to change, I have to change. And my way ain't working. I keep doing the same old thing. And the definition of insanity is you do the same old thing expecting a different result. Right? So if you guys are listening to this, watching this, and you're hearing Robert's story, I want you to know that there's an opportunity to have the same kind of breakthrough that Robert had in his life, in your life. And it all started way back in February, 2019 with Robert, we hopped on a breakthrough call. This call is really about getting real guys. I mean, we disqualify, I should probably not use that word. We don't make an offer to 80% of the people we talk to. So we're not here to try and sell you, cajole you, persuade you. We're here to get really real with where you're at in your business. Where do you want to be in your business? What's at stake if you don't step up your game? And what's the most painful part of you continuing to stay on the trajectory you're on? And if it looks like we can help you, by all means, we will show you the way to your breakthrough. And if we can't, we will be the first person to advise you to pass on our services. Mark my words, we're not here to sell you. We're here to see if we have the right fit to help you create a breakthrough. And if indeed we do, then we'll show you the pathway to do exactly that. So if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you guys, and you're looking to increase your annual production, your annual income by at least 100K in commissions, if not more, we're not looking for people who just want an itty bitty little increase. If you're looking to increase your income by 20K, save yourself the time and our time. We're not the right fit, I'll tell you right now. We're looking for people who wanna create an avalanche of awesome in their life and are willing to do what it takes to make things happen, to really live your best life. Not a second best life, your best life. And if you're not willing to settle for a second best life and you know in your heart you're called to greatness and you're just looking for the proven plan and, and find a way to crack the code on your marketing to do exactly that, then I definitely encourage you guys to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call by going to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. I'm gonna put it on your screen here so you can see it. Mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. And um, that will get you to a page where you can book onto my calendar or one of my consultants calendars so we can hop on uh, a call and see if we can help you create a breakthrough. So again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Go ahead and do that now if indeed you meet the criteria I just mentioned. All right, Robert, it's been a lot of fun. Speaking of adventure, it's been an adventure uh, hanging with you and hearing about your story. Uh, thank you on, a, on behalf of everyone listening, watching. I know that uh, it's been an inspiration to many. Um, before we wrap up, what are you most excited about in your life moving forward? Um, we've got a team that's growing. Um, you know, our production is going crazy. Um, and so, you know, growing this team is a, a big goal of mine for the next you know quarter and the next six months. And I'd say that I'm super excited about that. I'm also super excited about, you know, what this business holds for the next year or two. Um, I certainly think we're, we've got a lot going on. It's going to be an exciting time. Yeah. So, guys, if you're in the Houston area and you love the loan business, but you don't love marketing 
and you love hanging with cool people that are ambitious, that are fun, that are proactive, that have the extreme ownership mindset that if it is to be, it's up to me. They don't blame shift. They don't make excuses. They don't point fingers, but they really take ownership of creating victory in their life and the lives of those that are in their influence. And you're looking for an opportunity to hitch your wagon on to uh, a caboose that's going places and to hang with winners who can really add fuel to your fire and help you win and help you become a better version of yourself. I definitely encourage you to reach out to Robert uh, and see if maybe there's a good fit. He's looking to grow his team and maybe there's a good fit where uh, you guys can be a synergistic link to be able to uh, help each other win. So uh, this is an unsolicited plug on behalf of Robert. <laughs> for, the, for those of you who, uh, who feel like you know, you're the person I'm talking about, definitely reach out. What's the best way for people to connect with you, Robert, if they uh, fit into that category? I think we're on Facebook, so you can find me, Robert Spiegel, on Facebook. You can also go to my website, which is the spiegelgroup.com, and that's uh, S-P-I-E-G-E-L. Um, or you just Google me. We uh, we have a fairly decent web presence. If you look for Robert Spiegel and mortgage uh, on the magical Google, um, you'll Love find it. us and send me an email. Love it. So his team is not allowed to Google him because they need to be independent and uh, build their muscle to be competent and confident on their own. But uh, because we're giving an opportunity to connect with Robert personally to see if maybe you have a question or you just want to have a convo or a follow up on this uh, this podcast, by all means, reach out to him. He ain't hard to find, guys. Just hit him up on Google, Robert Spiegel, the one and the only. So Robert, <laughs> as we uh, as we wrap up, I just wanna salute you. Uh, you've been a pleasure and a delight to work with. It's been really fun to see your growth and uh, I feel so honored and privileged to be part of your breakthrough. And I love the fact that you keep showing up to the calls on time, coachable, committed, I don't think I saw you miss a single Q&A call because you're just, that's how you roll. You know yep. that if you want to be a champion, you can't afford to show up like a chump and miss calls. So I just, uh, I want to honor you for your commitment, your drive, uh, your willingness to take on the challenge that is the adventure of the growth path. So I just salute you, brother. And uh, it's been a heck of a ride and the best is yet to come. Yeah. Hey, thank you for the adventure. It's been a lot of fun. Awesome, man. We ain't done. We just begun. We're just getting warmed yeah. up, man. We're just getting warmed up. That's the cool part. <laughs> Absolutely. So guys, if you want to get a little uh, inside look as to what the catalyst was for Robert that has allowed him to uh, go from averaging 10 to 12 to 15% growth in a rut of stagnation uh, relative to what he's doing now at 100% growth this year in such a short period of time, I invite you to book a call. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Complimentary breakthrough call, no strings attached. Our gift to you to see if we might be the right fit to help you create your breakthrough. And if nothing else, you're going to leave that, that call with massive value, massive clarity, and chances are we'll even have some fun. All right, guys. So be blessed. Thanks for listening to us. This is Doran Aldana, mortgagemarketingcoach.com, coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast, hanging with my man, Robert Spiegel. And uh, I'm so glad you tuned in. Stay tuned for another episode. And remember, the biggest gap in life is the gap between that which you know and that which you do. So bridge the gap between where you are and where you want to be by taking massive action. Bring massive positive energy to that action. Chances are you'll get massive results. Thanks for hanging with us, guys. Be blessed. Make it a great day. Peace.